Welcome to the Bible's Bash scripting class. In this section, we will go over simple commands in Bash. Let's start with a quick overview. Bash, like other shells, is both a programming language and a command interpreter. In this section, we will focus only on the commands, and that two simple ones to get BioWolf users started with Bash. What are commands? Commands are words that instruct the shell to execute an action. Most commands have options and arguments. When you access BioWolf through a terminal, you are presented with a prompt. This is where you enter shell commands. Hitting the return key submits the command for execution. Bash interprets the command and passes it to the kernel, which starts the process. We go deeper into processes in a different section of this course. Commands, pretty much all words in Bash, are case sensitive. Bash also does not tolerate spelling mistakes. We'll see this in action soon. Before we go to the demonstration, let's look at the general syntax of a command on the prompt. Here on the left is the prompt. After the prompt is where a user sees the cursor which allows us to enter characters and words on the shell. The first word we usually type is the command itself. Followed by the command are the options and flags, which, as the name suggests, are optional. And finally, there are arguments at the end. Let's start with some simple bash commands. We're logged into BioWolf, and this is the bash prompt. Here you can enter commands. We'll first try the echo command. Echo prints or displays a line of text. If you've ever taken a programming class, you will be familiar with this example. The phrase, hello world, is the argument passed to the echo command. Hit the return key to run the command and echo prints the argument. Another useful echo command is echo dollar sign shell in all caps. This prints the path of the shell you're running and it should be the bash shell. The word dollar sign shell is a built-in variable or a special word in most shells. Variables hold information and this one carries the path for the running shell. We have a whole section on variables in this course. If you're not running the bash shell for some reason, you can start one by using the bash command. Date is a simple bash command that you can use to get the current time and date. As I've mentioned before, commands are case sensitive, so typing the same command with all caps won't work. Most commands in a bash shell are lowercase. I've also mentioned commands having options or flags. The hyphen capital I flag for the date command prints the date in ISO format. Case sensitivity is important even for options or flags, so a lowercase i to the date flag doesn't do the same thing. In this case, lowercase i is not an option date accepts. How do we know what options and arguments a bash command can accept? There are a few ways to do that. Let's start with the hint we just got from bash. The long option hyphen hyphen help to date should give us some instructions. Scroll up and down the terminal window to read through the documentation. Another very useful way to get help is the manual command man. Let's look at the manual for date command. To scroll up and down the manual, use the space enter or arrow keys. Press the H key to get help on using the manual itself. As mentioned on the bottom, press Q to get back to the date manual. Press Q again to exit the manual. Finally, try the info command to get more information about a command. For example, info date. Again, press Q to exit the documentation screen and return to the prompt. Moving on to files and directories. These are organized hierarchically, much like they are on a Windows PC or a Mac. You can check the current directory using the command pwd, which stands for print working directory. This is the path of your current directory. The slash separates the directories in the path. When you log into a Linux machine with a shell, you start from a preset directory. This is called your home directory and this information is stored in dollar sign home variable. Let's print that with the echo command. As you can see, this matches the output of pwd. What about the contents of a directory? We can use the command ls for that. Without any arguments, ls will list the files and directories in your working directory. 
Many shells are configured to highlight directories in some way. Here, the directory my project is highlighted blue. The flag hyphen lowercase l gives us more details. How about creating new directories? We can use the make directory command like so. The make directory command can take multiple arguments if you want to make multiple directories in one go. Here, I'm going to make two directories inside the newly created test directory. Now let's see the contents of the new directory. Here, we pass the argument test to ls to see what's inside the test directory. We can change our working directory with the cd command, which takes the path of the new directory as an argument. This path can be relative, or this path can be absolute. As you may have noticed, our prompt is also showing us our working directory. Most shells are configured that way, and this gives you a quick way of determining where you are located on the file system. Let's go back to our home directory. Without any arguments, the cd command does exactly that. Notice the tilde character near the end of the prompt. It is shorthand for the home directory path and also can be used with commands like ls or cd or make directory. We use the move command to move files and directories. It requires two arguments. The first is the path of the file or directory to move, and the second is the new path. These paths can be relative or absolute. Let's try it out. Here's what we have in our current directory. Let's move the file called file underscore a dot text into my project. Now we check the contents of the my project directory. And there is the file we just moved. The move command is also used to rename files in directory. Let's rename the file file b.txt and move it at the same time to the my project directory. Here's how we would do that. Now let's look at the contents of the my project directory. And now you see that same file, but also renamed with the suffix .csv. Moving on to custom commands we have in BIOS. These are specific to the cluster. One of them is check quota without a space, and it shows users the disk and object store usage. For BioWolf specific commands, we often provide documentation using the long option hyphen hyphen help. Finally, let's clear the screen with the clear command. Here is a summary of the commands we just went over. We started with the echo command that helps us print a line of text. The bash command starts a new bash shell. Date gives us the date and time. Manual and info commands are very helpful when you want to figure out how to use a command. The next set of commands are useful for exploding and managing files and directories from bash. PWD prints the working directory. LS lists the contents of a directory and make directory creates a new one, while CD changes the working directory. Finally, move is for moving or renaming files and directories. And it also showed you a viable specific command called check quota to help you determine your disk usage. And we ended with the clear command to clear the terminal screen. This concludes the section simple commands of the BioWolf bash scripting class. I gave you a quick overview of the bash shell, what commands are, their general syntax, and showed you many of the simple commands you may need on a daily basis. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email us. And don't forget to use the manual command.